So, this is the steroid hormone synthesis. The starting process is the cholesterol which gets converted to pregnin alone and this pregnin alone undergoes the major metabolic pathway by 17 alpha hydroxylase enzyme to 17 hydroxy pregnin alone and then it converts to dehydroxy epiandrosterone and finally androstenedone then which gets converted by the 17 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase enzyme and forms a testosterone. So, this is the major pathway of testosterone synthesis from cholesterol and again sometimes the minor pathway it can take through the progesterone and converts to 17 hydroxy progesterone then androstenedione then testosterone that also can happen and this testosterone gets converted to dihydrotestosterone which has got more affinity to bind with the testosterone receptor okay and that is converted by 5 alpha reductase enzymes there are certain drugs which comes under this category which i told you finasteride deutasteride okay so sometimes they can ask you 5 alpha reductase inhibitor mcqs short notes and then the testosterone also gets converted to estradiol that is the estrogen component by the enzyme aromatase. So, there will be a aromatase inhibitors are there. So, that is also a very important. Okay. So, and then finally, estradiol, estradiol it gets converted again androstenedione gets converted to estrone and finally, estradiol. So, this is a normal testosterone synthesis and the estrogen synthesis and this progesterone again it can lead to form cortisol your corticosteroids. So, what is the role of mitochondria in the adrenal steroidogenesis? Now, as I told you the test is 90 percent of the test is, is responsible for the formation of the uh, that uh, particular hormone testosterone ok. Whereas, 10 percent adrenal gland is involved especially if you see the adrenal cortex where it is divided into three layers zona glomerulosa which is responsible for synthesis of mineralocorticoids and zona fasciculata responsible for production of glucocorticoids whereas, the zona reticularis that is responsible for the adrenal androgens like dehydro epiandrosterone and then the testosterone minute quantity ok. And whereas, the medulla of course, you know the catecholamines adrenaline, norepinephrine and adrenaline they release ok. Whereas, in females ovaries constitute 30 percent of the synthesis of this hormones whereas, adrenal gland constitutes 70 percent. So, whatever I said testosterone 0.3 to 1.3 microgram per liter this is produced in the females this is the split up over is 30 percent produces and adrenal gland produces 70 percent ok. And as I said the synthesis of the um, uh, testosterone which starts from the cholesterol. So, what happens this cholesterol through its own receptor LDL receptor it gets into the cytoplasm of the cell ok and then inside the testis and then it goes into the this cholesterol compound gets esterified ok in the presence of lipase the, the esterified form of cholesterol gets converted to cholesterol in the presence of lipase enzyme and this cholesterol gets into the mitochondria where it undergoes some mitochondrial oxidation process in the presence of some enzymes and gets converted to pregnenolone. So, as I told you in the previous slide cholesterol gets converted to pregnenolone this is the way how it converts ok and this pregnenolone then gets comes out of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm ok and then the next step of synthesis through the major pathway I told you pregnenolone to andro dihydroepiandrosterone and androstenedione then testosterone that forms ok. So, this is the role of mitochondria in the adrenal steroidogenesis how it synthesis in the adrenal gland. Next comes the function of the testis. So, as I told you the hypothalamo pituitary testicular axis. So, the hypothalamus the important hormone is a gonadotropin releasing hormone which is released in a pulsatile manner that is occasionally it is just on and off like that it releases it is not a continuous process ok. So, it is a pulsatile manner. So, naturally this gonadotropin releasing hormone acts on the pituitary uh, gland where it causes the synthesis or uh, release of LH luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone. And these two hormone will act on two different types of cells which I described earlier that is the Leydig cells. You can see that L stands for luteinizing which acts on the L first letter Leydig cells and which is responsible for release of testosterone. Whereas, FSH you got S I told you the Sertoli cells first letter is S or otherwise seminiferous tubules which is the first letter is S and the spermatogenesis where the first letter is S. So, again in the hormone you have got S in the so, this particular follicle stimulating hormone acts on the Sertoli cells and 
thereby it causes sperm production, sperm maturation. So, involved in the process of spermatogenesis. Then find there is a, another hormone like inhibin B and activin. They have an indirect role in the FSH release, control of the FSH release. This inhibin B will inhibit the FSH release whereas activin will activate this FSH release from the pituitary gland.